So we're going to take a try to take. We're going to take a little bit more in-depth look at the DaVinci Resolve keyboard. Now, first thing to know, this is prototype, and there are some keys on it that aren't working and aren't mapped to other things just yet, but there's a lot of it that is working, and it's it's an interesting, pretty cool little uh, little tool. So let's take a little bit closer look at it for what I've been able to figure out from playing with it here on the show floor. So first thing I want to clear up is I've heard some people comment and say that it's only designed for the cut page and only works on the cut page. That's not true because I can jump here onto the edit page and I can mark an endpoint and I can mark an out point and I can uh, actually overwrite and do basic editorial features on the edit page. So it's not only designed for the cut page. Now one thing here to look at on the right side there's a shuttle, a jog, and a scroll button that changes what the wheel does. In shuttle mode, there will be gears inside that uh, sort of clamp down and give you a bit of a tactile feel back as you jog around the, uh, the um, timeline. I'm sorry, as you... Over here on the right side, there's three buttons by the jog shuttle wheel, and depending on the button it's pushed, this, the wheel is going to behave a little bit differently. In the shuttle mode, there are gears inside that will give you some tactile feedback as you shuttle around and move the playhead. Jog does what you think it's going to do, and it will jog the playhead at a slower speed. Now, scroll looks like it's designed for really fast movement, and it'll come in really handy on the cut page because you can see this second timeline that lives now here, this sort of timeline overview map thingy that you can scroll really quickly to get through that. Now if you notice on the cut page, the bottom playhead here does not move. And you can't really zoom the bottom part of the timeline. It's designed to give you a sort of a fixed view as you move around. If I hit jog, I'm, I'm shuttling now. If I hit jog, you can see it's a much slower movement. And as I go faster on the wheel, it's going to move the timeline faster. And of course, you see the playhead in this upper timeline moving, doing its thing. A quick note on this upper little timeline. You can edit from this thing. You can uh, move clips around. I can grab a clip from the bottom and drop it on the top into the top timeline. So it's a fully, uh, it's not just a map. It's fully active for editorial. I can trim, do all kinds of stuff like that with it. So that's, that's kind of cool. On the keyboard, there is a source and timeline button, and depending on what you want to do, you can jump back over to the source. In the cut page now, I've got a bin of media here, and whatever clip that I have selected, I've double clicked, that's what's showing in the source. But I hit the timeline button, I jump back over to the timeline. So while it's a single viewer, it's not a single viewer locked to the timeline. You can jump over to the source. When you're in the source, there are dedicated buttons for shuffling uh, or sorting in the uh, by the different columns. As you can see, as I'm pushing time code, camera duration, those uh, clips in that bin on the left are reshuffling and resorting just by pushing the buttons. So that's pretty cool. But I think the main thing about it people want to know about is on the left side here, you have these dedicated edit buttons. Now, what we're going to have to do is to play with this and and get our mind around what some things are called. For instance, if I hold down the roll source button and then use the jog wheel, I'm sorry, I'm holding down the roll in button, I use the jog wheel, I am trimming the end point of that clip. If I hit roll out, I'm gonna trim the out point of the clip below because what it seems to be doing is it, the playhead is gonna interact and edit whatever is nearest the playhead. So if you want to roll the end point of this clip here on V2, you can just you can just jog down, hit the roll out key, and I'm holding down the key. I'm not, it's not, it activates, so you have to hold down the key to actually do the roll. So I'm making my trim there by um, holding that key down. Some of the other, um, there's a roll transition button, where if I, I'm near a transition and I hit the, uh, or hold the roll transition button, I'm rolling the edit, edit there. There are three dedicated buttons to add transitions. I mean, there's a cut button, which I'm thinking will probably maybe do a razor edit at some point. It doesn't seem to do anything right now. But if I hit dissolve, it adds a dissolve. Then I can hit down the roll transition, and it's going to roll that transition. There's another button for roll duration, and when I hold that down, it's actually changing the duration of the clip. And if you notice in the uh, this little the viewer window in the cut page, you've got that sort of a detailed transition editor or a detailed transition uh, viewer shows you exactly what you're doing. There's also an option for uh, rolling destination, which is actually just a, uh, I believe that would be a slip trim, because that's slipping the clip as I move the uh, playhead there. And then uh, for roll source, I'm not, I'm not sure the difference in the roll source and roll destination, so that'll take a little bit of figuring out. 
because I think it's rolling uh, one, two different clips. But it's nice to be able, it's kind of a cool feel to be able to hit that with a button and do that with this little, uh, with the jog shuttle wheel. So it's, it's a sort of a different way of editing. I'm looking forward to being able to really, really play with this. Back in the middle of the keyboard, you've got a lot of the tools that are mapped to uh, dedicated keys that you can hit to just do the basic editorial stuff in Resolve. So the middle of this keyboard is pretty standard stuff that of course will operate in all the different, um, the different pages. But if you notice, some of the um, options labeled on the keyboard are for editorial. So it is an editor keyboard, it's not a color keyboard. So obviously it's cool that they've, uh, they've developed this just for editorial, but of course if you're doing a lot of color work, all the buttons are gonna work, work the same. So that's, so that's, uh, that's really nice. It'll, and, and the other thing I wanna mention, I mentioned with Dan, the keys feel really good. It's very soft, it's very easy to type. They're not hard to push, which, was, which if you remember old style keyboards, they um, could be kinda hard to push. Um, so overall, even though this is a prototype, just playing with it here, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of fun. I'm excited about it because it is not something I'm plugging in USB and adding on that's trying to uh, sort of sh um, shoehorn its way in. It's, it's sort of designed for some of the features. Um, the question I'll have once I spend some time with it is, you know, should some of the buttons be something different? But uh, we may not ever be able to map these, so we may be stuck with what we got. But, like for example, there is a dedicated button for the, uh, for the smooth cut. I don't know how often, I mean, that obviously the smooth cut is not designed to work in that situation right there, but you're not very often adding a smooth cut, so I'm not sure why that's dedicated to its own button, because you don't do them very often, but um, you certainly do dissolves quite often, so it's still nice to be able to pop that on there, then hit the uh, roll duration, and you can really, really quickly, uh, in a sort of a tactile way, be able to, um, you know, do some, you know, add a quick, uh, quick dissolve there. So that's the editor keyboard. A fun thing I'm quite excited about.